Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. And he saved them, verse 10, from the hand of him that hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. Verse 12, then believed they his words and they sang his praise. They soon forgot his words. They waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent meanness into their souls. Amen. Got what you wanted, but lost what you had. Got what you wanted, 
but lost what you had. God wants to see you blessed. Ain't that right? Say it. God wants to see me blessed. God wants to see you blessed. Read, I know because I he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. That's what the book says to his people. I, I, I got some thoughts about you. I see your situation. I see your circumstance. Hmm? And I know you don't always like your circumstance or your situation. Can we be honest? When he spoke that, Israel was actually in bondage in Babylon. They were somewhere they did not want to be. And the truth is, sometimes you find we find ourselves that we'd rather be somewhere else doing something else. Sometimes with somebody else. Can we be honest? Amen. Tell the truth and what? Shame the devil. But be wise. God knows what's best. Is that right? Amen. And you and I may not like everything about our life, but our life is still blessed. Why? Because God is the one that gave it to us. You may not like where you live, but what you live is still Blessed. The reason why? Because God the one put the roof over your head. You may get sick and tired of the aches and pains in your body, but guess what? You're still alive, and that's something to be thankful for. Always appreciate whatever God does for you, even when you do not understand it. Hmm? Because even when you do not understand it, God, the Bible says, he is working it for your good. That's what the text says. Whatever season or situation or circumstance you find yourself in right now, the scripture said God is working it for your good. You may have some disagreements and disappointments in your life, but God says, I'm working it together for your good. It may be some folk, amen, that you done fell out with, but some kind of way God says, I'm working it for your good. You Still on the way. There was a man at the, at, the, at, the, at the pool of 
was still on, amen, it was sick for 37 years, and he was, he was angry, he was frustrated. Why? Because when the angels came and trouble the water, he said, the folk is stepping over me. Nobody would help me, but Jesus still showed up. God knows how long you've been in pain. God knows how long you've been suffering. God knows how long you've been crying. He still don't show up. But he only going to show up for you if you keep showing up for him. God says, it is good to wait patiently, quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Y'all know what it said? He didn't say it was good to complain because it ain't what you want. He didn't say it was good to fuss because it's not going your way. He said, quietly wait. That's what the text said. That's why I'm going to take chapter 3, verse 26. The book say it's good to quietly wait. And we don't do that well, do we? No, we, we get ticked off. And we got to let people know what a mule tie, like Papa said. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We got to give them a piece of our mind. That's why some of us ain't got no mind left. We done gave so many, piece of, so many people a piece of our mind. We ain't got no peace in our lives. Always fussing, always quarreling, always whining, always complaining. Ain't got no peace of mind. You know why? Because you done gave it all away. Huh? The book says if you pray, he'll give you peace that's the past understanding. That's what the book said. But he didn't say that if you complain, when you complain, you're going to run everybody off. You, when you complain, you get on God's nerve. And some of us do not understand that we can't get on God's nerve. We get on God's nerve when we act like you don't need us wrong. You did me wrong, God, when you took my dad. You should have took him. Well, who did he belong to? He belonged to him before he belonged to me. Huh? You did me wrong, God, when you took my job. I love that job. Huh? Hello? Just because you love it don't mean he loved it for you. Did you understand that? Just because God gave it to you does not mean that was a he intended for you to keep it. Sometimes he's doing something you don't understand and will not accept. If it was up to us, there would be no folk in heaven. Because we wouldn't want them to die. Am I right? They be laying at home sick and, and, and sick in their body and can't hardly breathe. No, don't take them, Lord. Huh? If it was up to us, nobody would be in heaven. We would want them to stay with us. Huh? That shows you our what? Selfishness. We don't think about what's best for somebody else. We think about what would be good for, for us. And the truth is, most of the time, we don't even know what's good for us. Huh? Israel was so blessed by God. And we are so blessed by God. Because the book said, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. That's in verse number one. His mercy endured forever. That should have been dead by now. Because I sin and come short of the glory of God. And the Bible says, this is chapter that the way to sin is still death. I should have been dead by now. Because I didn't see him more than one time. Uh, hello, yeah, I ain't the only one up in here. I, I should have been dead a thousand times because I sinned against them. I, I should have been dead 10,000. I don't know how many times I have sinned. But I should have been dead every, every time I sinned. It was funny. And God still wanted me blessed. Do you hear me? No matter how many times I've sinned against him, Sister, Sister Johnson, he still wants to see me blessed. See, you should have been shot right there. No matter how many times you don't come up short of God's glory, he still wants to see you blessed. How we know? Because that's what the text is teaching us today. Israel was in Egypt, somewhere they didn't want to be. And they were with people who didn't like them. And so they was praying, Lord, have mercy. Get me out of this mess. Huh? And all of us in here that prayed that prayer one time or another. By something somebody else did what? To us? Or something we did to ourselves. Lord, get me out of this mess. Israel was praying. And God was listening to their prayers. He did not 
come when they first prayed. He came when the time was right. Because the Bible said to everything there is a season. God has a season when he's going to come through with your breakthrough. God has a season when he's going to come through with your breakthrough. God has a season when he's going to come through with your breakthrough. God has a season when he's going to come through with your breakthrough. The season is coming. doing something. He's watching you the way you carry yourself. Huh? He delivered them from Pharaoh and brought them to the Red Sea. And they left out blessed. The Egyptian gave them their gold and their silver. I want you to understand, when Israel came to Egypt, they were poor. They were in a starving land where there was no bread. And when they left out, they came in, they left out richer than when they came in. Your latter end shall be more blessed than your beginning if you just do the will of God for your life. Your latter end will be more blessed than your beginning if you just do the will of God for your life. And, and, and they, 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 they were at the Red Sea and they, they still had some Egypt in them and so they was complaining and they were whining and he did not save them because they were good. Amen. He saved them because he is good. Huh? That's what the text said in verse 10. He saved them from the hand of them that hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. Not because they were good, but because he is good. I don't care how glorious and, and awesome you think you are. Whatever you got is by the grace of God. Whatever you be is by the goodness of the Lord. The house you got the drive to drive. If you got some money in the bank, it's by the grace of God. Waters covered their enemies, and then they found some faith. That's verse 12. They believed his, his words, and when they believed, they praised. Did y'all hear what text said? When you believe God, you praise God. You don't praise God because you don't what? You don't believe God. Huh? When you believe God, you praise God. When you do not believe God, you praise everybody else. It was my mama, it was my child, it was myself, it was my husband, it was my children, it was my child. When you believe God, you praise God. But when you don't believe in God, you praise in somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 12. What happened to Israel happens to us. We have a tendency. So it's better to, to forget. That's what verse 13 says. They forgot. God woke me up in the morning this morning. I, I know who did it. it. It was the same one that laid me down Amen. last night. Amen. Amen. I got some crackers in the, in the cabinet with some peanut butter. Amen. I know who did it. It was nobody but the Lord. Huh? And, I, and I can't forget that because I realized uh, I, I'm not nothing without him. Because Jesus said, without me, you can do what? Nothing. <laughs> and so be careful when you get to talking big and, and think you need to by yourself and you've been telling folk what you did. But the books say they forgot his works. And, and, and the reason they forgot his work because you go back to verse 12, they believe only because they could see. Huh? But when they couldn't see, no way they, they didn't believe no more. Huh? When he when he when he parted the Red Sea, they believed, Sister Captain, because they can see what they were eyes. But now they're over in the promised land and, and, and they can't see no way now. Now they're back to whining and complaining. They forgot the one that parted the Red Sea. Huh? They forgot the one that did ten signs and one of when it was in Egypt. They forgot that he had drowned Pharaoh's men in the Red Sea. They forgot that he the one that made him his own special people. They forgot he the one that woke him up in the morning. They forgot he the one that put the food on there. They forgot he was gonna put the floor. There's nothing good in my in my flesh, right? 
they, they forgot. I'm, I'm, we done forgot who it's about today. Huh? So we talk about presidents. We talk about Congress and we talk about governors and we talk about boss men. Uh, we talk about big head hunters. We talk about everything but God. Uh, you, know, uh, you can have plenty of big head hunters, but uh, your big head hunter can't get you in heaven. You can know the president, amen. But the president ain't got that kind of pull of God that can save your soul. You got to know the Lord for yourself. And don't you forget that. But not only did they forget Sister Bowden, they, the Bible said they, they couldn't. They got impatient, so the lady of the book said they got impatient. Anybody get impatient? Yeah. I was impatient this morning. A uh, car turned out in front of me. And then they were going real fast. And then they just made a decision they were going to go real slow. I, was, I, was, I, got, I testified. I, I, I told off on myself. I got them impatient. And, and when the time was right, I passed. You see, you really can't talk because you didn't do some of the same stuff. <laughs> The, the book said, my brother Robert, they, they got him impatient. When, when you get impatient, what you're saying to God is, you ain't moving good enough. Amen. You ain't moving on my time. But, but you forgot who on time. The book said time belonged to, to God. He can do what he want in time. And the truth is, sometimes the reason you're impatient is because God is trying to work on your patience. And some people say, Lord, y'all pray for me and I grow patient. Well, the way that God helped you grow patient, he let you be impatient. Did y'all hear what I said? He lets you be impatient. So I find myself behind the slow people. Now I'm getting impatient. The Holy Spirit will, will tell me, well, maybe they got some problem. Maybe they in that kind of crime because somebody died and that's why they driving slow. And what God will do is help me to get the focus off of what myself and put it on somebody else. And then he used the situation to help me, amen, do his will. I'm praying for them people that's in the car that's in front of me. They're, they're going fast for a minute. They're going, you know, they're going slow, but they're running over the line. God bless them in that. So I'm taking the focus off of what I'm not getting and praying, God bless them with what they, what they need. When you're impatient with folk in your life because the folk are getting on your nerves, instead of just being mad with them, pray for them. Lord, help them be what they need to be. Help them to, help, give them whatever they need to help them be what you want them to be. Instead of dealing with the, the impatience, amen, and, and getting out of the domain, amen, stay in the will of God. They became impatient. Patient and, and, and the, 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 the verse 14 talk about why they came and, and, and so the, uh, so the read impatient because they wanted something they didn't have. You ever want something you didn't have? Amen. You remember that teaching you got? We finna go in this store. Don't look at nothing. Don't touch nothing. And don't ask for nothing. <laughs> That's that teacher you got when you was a little hard-headed girl, when you a little bad boy. We finna go and they, they set the expectation. We finna go in the stuff. Don't look at nothing, don't touch nothing, and don't ask for nothing. And the reason they saying because I'm going to do what's right by you if you just conduct yourself right. Now, they didn't say that to you, but that's exactly what they meant. And see, that didn't come from them. That came from God. Whatever I 
want to call myself. Do you see that in the text? They forgot who was in charge. They became impatient. And then they, they, they let their lust get the best of them. Instead of them wanting to walk in the will of God, they let, what your text said, they lusted exceedingly in the will. In other words, they lost control. And you see people that have lost control. And when you lose control, you'll mess around and find yourself an act because you've lost control. When you lost control, you'll find yourself cheating on your husband or your wife. When you lost control, you'll find yourself stealing and put food on your table rather than going and getting a job. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You will see this all around the country. Folk are breaking in stores and stealing what other folk got rather than going and getting a job and earning an honest living. Why? Because we done lost control. Why? We done forgot who but when, but when we do that, Brother Pew, the text said we grieve in, we grieve in God. And what's your text say? The text said in your King James, they tempted God. That means they put him to the test. You ever tested your mama? You found out she passed, didn't she? Because <laughs> when you got through testing her, she tested you, did she? She wants to see how you can jump. Y'all ain't going to. Say, when you put that switch on your leg, you, y'all ain't. Y'all ain't. It ain't been that long ago. <laughs> you, you remember them days, and, and, and you tested her. And, and to be careful when you test God. That's where verse 15 comes. Because sometimes he will give you what you you want, but you'll lose what you had. David uh, tested God one night. There was a beautiful woman, a man on the rooftop, uh, taking a, a bath, and he tested he tested God. And, I, and the reason I say he tested because because God had already blessed what. David. He was the king of Israel. He already had at least two wives at this point. He was married to Michael, Saul's daughter, and he was married to Abigail, the, the, the wife of Nabal. He already had two wives at this point, and, and he was testing God. The first thing he did to test God, the king should have been out on the battlefield, but he took a weekend off. And you got to take, you got to be careful taking a weekend off from doing the will of God. It's a folk that took a weekend uh, off from doing the will of God. They ain't been back to church yet. You know somebody they been out, amen. They out with the with the forty ounce in their hand and they talking about the ball game. They said, "Go come on later on, but baby, the forty ounce cannot uh, deliver you. The ball game cannot save you. You need a God. You need a God for that, baby. It's a broken man that left the church because they were pursuing the Almighty Dollar. They wanted a better life than what they had, and they began to pursue the Almighty Dollar. They let the Almighty Dollar lead them out the church. It was funny. They got the dollar, amen. Now they. They don't come to church, but they go everywhere else for the dollar. Y'all, y'all, see, a dollar, a dollar can, a dollar might make you holler, but a, lot, a dollar can give you a good shot. You got a good shot when you know what the dollar meant for. The dollar meant to bless the Lord. The Bible said everything that have breath do what? Bless the Lord. And so look here, the text said that, 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 that he gave them their request. He gave them such a body. So seven grace. The book said he gave them what they what they wanted. You hear me, Sister Oak Street? He they got on his nerve. Remember I told you they had already put him to what? To the, they got on his last nerve. Huh? And somebody said, God, get, send me a oh man. Huh? And he sent them a oh, man. And the funny thing is, they praying now, Lord, you sent me the wrong man. He don't love me like I wanted to be loved. He he he, he talked bad about me. He he whooped on me. But you prayed for what you wanted, and God sent you what you asked 
Oh, you didn't want what he wanted for you because he had a man that was on order. But you got tired of waiting. You were listening to the sister Sherry, and she done had four men. And the one she got it don't even belong to her, but you would rather be right with Sister Shirley and be out of the will of the Lord. You know, some, some folk pray for a better Lord, give me a better job. And now they say, well, you got to work overtime. And if you don't work overtime, you can't have your no job no more. And now the job done took them away from church. And now they don't have no mind to read the Bible. They're too tired, amen. They don't want to go to work. But you ask for what you want. It. And sometimes God will give you what you want, but you will lose what you had. Some of them, amen, uh, pray for a bigger house, and they got the bigger house, and, and they didn't realize, well, a bigger house come with bigger bills. Y'all ain't gonna say that, and bigger burdens, amen. And now I, I look and I see, folks, amen. They got the big house, but the yard ain't cut. They got the big house, but it's falling apart. Because they wanted a bigger house, but they need some bigger understanding. A bigger house will come with bigger responsibility. If you got a big yard, amen, that little push mower, you need three weeks trying to push it with a push mower. You know, somebody, be careful what you ask for, because God might give you what you want, but you will lose what you have. Now look here, don't, don't, don't get, don't be so quick to get tired of the people in your life, because when you begin to complain about your husband, when you begin to complain about your wife, you might find one day you're going to wake up, and they're going to be gone. But look, when they go down, you didn't appreciate them. When they go down, you didn't pray for them. When they go down, all you did was fuck. But now that I've got somebody else, and now look at you by yourself. Be careful what you ask for. You might get what you want, but you'll lose what you have. Anybody glad that we don't got a God that know how to bless us, that know when to bless us, that know what to bless us with? The Bible says the Father know how to give good gifts to them folk that ask him. The Bible says that God is just standing there waiting, calling up. He's on the main line, telling what you want. But the truth is this, it ain't really about what you want, it's about what he wants for you. If you go to Psalm 37, folks, he said, delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give you the desires of your heart. But look at the text. We like to get to the point where it says, I can get what I want. But the text says, you can get what you want when you give God what he asks for. Anybody in here trying to live to the glory of God, trying to please him, trying to sanctify his name, you let everybody where you come from, where you get your blessing from. Look, everything I got is by the goodness of God. That wife I got, by the goodness of God. That house I live in, by the goodness of God. The cars I drive, by the goodness of God. The church I pastor, by the goodness of God. The children I got, by the goodness of God. Ain't nothing good in my flesh, but I know a God that's on the inside, working on the inside, and it'll show up on the outside. Anybody ever try? For yourself. He didn't say Larry because Larry was good. He didn't say Larry because Larry was perfect. Larry is torn up from the floor. But I got a God that look past my thoughts and sees my need. Anybody up in here that need a little bit more Jesus? I got a whole lot of stuff, but it don't compare to having the Lord down on the inside walking with me, talking with me, telling me that I am his own. I got Jesus and I'm satisfied with him. Hello, somebody. You can have this whole world, but give me Jesus. I have grown to the place that if God don't want it for me, I don't want it. And I realize that if that be the case, I may have to wait a little longer. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I realize folk gonna be looking at me, look at it, look at it, talking about it, huh? But I need that because that teaches me patience. That tries my faith. 
See, stop walking on the shadow when they're on the mountaintop. Baby, when I'm in my bed, I can still say glory be to God. I ain't got one friend. I can say, what a friend I have in Jesus. All of my sin and grief the bad. What a privilege. It is a carry. I can stand by myself now. You know that wherever my feet are, he said, boy, then put that in your hands. Why? Because of what verse 8 says. He didn't save us because we was good. He saved us because he's good. And I, I got to the place. I got to the place. But let's see. If he ain't gave it to me yet. That means I'm being checked. And, and, and I don't get bothered when I see you got what I want. But I ain't got what I want. Because I know if you stop by and bless you, my time coming, he gonna stop by and he gonna bless me. And the thing I like about it is, it's been some folks that laughed at me. Oh, he ain't nothing. Little Reed, he ain't nothing. Some of them folk is sick now. Some of them folk can't even think right now. They were just laughing at me yesterday. And today their mind ain't working right. You better be careful playing with the children of God. God will judge you in the name of Jesus. God will let them laugh at you. And then bless you in their face. And then show them how much he loves you. While they were looking down on you, God was planning already to lift you up. Don't be judgmental. Be thankful for what you got. You could not have what you got. And this is what I know. My best days. Look at me. I needed to wait so I could learn how to walk to work. Huh? I needed folk talking about me so I could stay talking to him. I don't care if folk laugh at me today. I used to. You see, you upset. Now I get sorry for You know why? I used to be him. Did you hear what I said? I used to be him. And if he changed me, <laughs> if he changed me, he can change them. Y'all remember what Rahab said? That old prostitute. Y'all remember what that old prostitute told him to spy? We heard what your God did for y'all. Huh? We heard what your God did for y'all. And guess what? Now she is the leader of Jesus Christ. Ain't you glad God can take another and make something out of it? God can take something everybody else threw away and God will lift it up and treasure it. Ain't you glad when folks say you ain't gonna be nothing? They could not stop God blessing on your life. There was a time when you thought it would happen for you. Even my unbelief can't stop what God will do for me. Huh? My unbelief can't stop what God want to do for me. Let me qualify that. It can stop some stuff. But not what His perfect will has already what? Decided. What His perfect will has decided. Can't nothing or nobody stop that. If He said, if I believe that Jesus died for me on that cross at Calvary, and He said, I'm going to heaven. None of my sin can stop that. Why? Some forgive me my sin, is that right? Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But there's going to be some fruit out of that, right? Because the Holy Spirit will lead you to be what? God of what? Soft for your sin. And that means you're going to repent and say, Lord, forgive me for the wrong I've done. Why? Because that's the heart you put in you. He took out that heart of what? Stone. And put in that heart of what? Flesh. That's submissive to his will. Be careful what you ask for. Because he's 
just might get it. This text says right here, some people ask for money. They got the money. And they still broke. They rich in the hand, but broke in the heart. Some people say, Lord, give me a house. He gave them a house. They made the house to God. And they found out you can have a house. But you can have a house and it not be a home. Do y'all hear me? Some folks ask for friends. Lord, give me some friends. They gave some they gave friends. But the friends using them. On the show when they want something. Huh? What's bad? They running them people down. But them people don't run them down until they want something. But guess what? They ask for that. But what God said, I am a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. I'm a brother that will stick with you and your person. Why are you trying to throw me away for somebody who will throw you away? What this text means, verse 15. You can have a full hand and an empty heart. You can have a full belly but be dried up in the spirit. And you know, you know the truth about that. You know a lot of people like that right now. Some of, some of them in our own families, they say they know the Lord, but they're not living for Him. They are depressed. They are down and out. Some of them are suicidal. But you really understand the power of this verse. He gave them what they wanted because they found on his nerves. He wanted to give them what they needed. What they needed was him. But they said, in essence, you ain't enough. And if God ain't going to be enough for you, nothing and nobody ever will. Be careful what you ask for. You might get what you want, but lose what you have. Amen. Are you saved? The goodness about being saved, he'll give it to whoever asks for. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the book said, Thou shalt be saved. Are you saved? Did you see yourself in the text today? You get mad when you don't get your way. You want to fuss with folk. You want to fall out. Your blood pressure raises up. The text said the reason why you do that because you forgot who in charge. Huh? If you think everything's supposed to go your way, you never forgot who in charge. Hello? You don't become impatient because you can't get your way. You make your lust get the better of you. And right there, you put God to the hood. Yes. I'm going to tell you what, you, what you'll find. You'll find your life going to have a whole lot of peace. Unless you buy your work. By yourself. Because you haven't learned how to get along with nobody else. You know most people best friends, right? Like, Y'all know where it is? Most people best friend today is technology. And the devil has got a hold of technology. Huh? And what's funny? They know how to have a relationship with technology, but can't even come home and sit around the dinner table and have a conversation. Ain't nobody got nothing to work. Come on. Ain't nobody got nothing to say. Be careful what you ask for. Because you just might get it. Let me tell you what some of this happened. Some of us did not like the way we were raised. We decided I'm going to do for my kids what my folks did what? Do for me. We got them hung up on all kind of toys and junk. And guess what now? Them folks will pull a plug on you to get your junk because we done trained them to treasure their junk more than treasure the people in their life. Be careful what you ask for because you just might get it and lose what you have. Give us a 
no money. Now families can't even stick together. Why? Money. Families separating over money. Because we start loving money more than we love each other. Come on now. See, look at yourself in that text. Where you at? Sometimes we, we come to church and we hear the word and we think of somebody else. Where have you forgotten God that he was in charge of your life? He can do whatever his will is for you, even if you think it's wrong. Huh? By the time they got to the Red Sea, oh, this wrong. This ain't where I'm supposed to be. The book said the steps of a good man. What about the Lord? He ordered your steps to this church today. You might say this is the wrong message, but God said, mm, this is the right message. This is the one you need to hear. And what he wants you to do with the message is look in there and see where you at. Huh? You don't forgot who in charge? You think it's about you? Everybody in your life is just supposed to do what you want to do? Do you, do you know how to love somebody else and, and, and seek their good rather than your own good? Are you becoming impatient? You bitter because your life is not moving as fast as you want it to move? You're less getting the best of you. You want what somebody else got. And you're looking at them and say they don't deserve it, but you do. Maybe that's why you ain't got it. You're judging them, but not judging yourself. And when you do those things, guess what the text said? You're testing God. You're putting God to the test. And sometimes what he'll do, he'll give you exactly what you asked for. Not because you needed it but because you wanted it. And he's going to use it to discipline you, to teach you to always put his will first. Be careful what you ask for. You're praying for peace and quiet. You don't like them cheering and all that noise. You're going to miss them cheering. You're going to miss their voice. You hear me? Oh, yeah. You're going to miss them. You're going to long to hear them. Mom and daddy getting on your nerves in old age? Be careful. When they gone, you're going to miss them. You're going to miss them calling you one more time. Trying to help you. Sometimes what we need to do is say, Lord, help me remember you in charge. That you do what's best for me. Help me to understand the situation. And help me be what you're calling me to be in the midst of it. That's the prayer we need to pray. Lord, help me be what you desire. You know this hard for me. It's okay to say that. Lord, you know this hurt my feelings. It's okay to say that. God wants you to be honest with him. But he don't want you to have a complaining spirit where every time you open your mouth, you're complaining about your situation. Because I'm going to tell you what you're doing right there. You're putting him to the test. Your complaining says to God, you done me wrong. I deserve better than this. What do you deserve? The text said the only thing you deserve is what? Death. But he gave you life not because you were good. But because he's good, he's giving you time to get it right. That's what he's doing. I'm going to shut up. When I die, she didn't want to start talking. Sister <laughs> Lizzie, I'm going to talk again. Brother Bob, I'm going to talk again.